Senator Dizek. Thank you, Mr. President. I move that further proceedings under the roll call be dispensed with and the Sergeant at Arms be instructed to bring in the absent members. On that motion, all those in favor say aye. aye. All those opposed say no. The motion prevails. Senator Dizek. Thank you, Mr. President. I move to take Senate File 33 from the table and ask for a roll call vote. Roll call vote has been requested. Roll call vote has been granted. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, the secretary will take the roll. Members, you voted on the motion to take uh, House File, excuse me, Senate File 33 from the table. Members, please vote. <laughs> Members, remember you're voting to, to, on the motion to take the uh, bill from the table. We're talking about Senate file number 33. Senator Jaziski, for those voting under, um, uh, under Rule 40.7. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Dreheim votes aye. Senator Dreheim votes aye. Senator Bowden. Thank you, Mr. President. I report that Senator May Quaid votes aye. Senator May Quaid votes aye. And I report that Senator Latz votes aye. Senator Latz votes aye. All those who voted have... All those who having voted, who desires to vote, the secretary will close the roll. There being 42 ayes and 21 nays, the motion to take the bill from the table, it passes. Or prevails. Senator Pratt. Thank you, Mr. President. Well, now that the bill is off the table and available for discussion again, I'd like to talk about what the bill does. It appropriates $269,000 for this fiscal year and over $2 million, as we saw in the, in the A5 amendment, every year after that. But Mr. President, this is coming before this, this body, before we've gone through the budgeting process. Now, we can certainly make an argument that the 269 would be appropriated yet this year has some urgency behind it so that the Attorney General can ramp up criminal, his criminal enforcement enhancements and other related initiatives. But Mr. President, we have a budgeting process that we go through. We set targets, we debate them, we just got the governor's budget, and this bill jumps ahead of all that. So, Mr. President, I would like to offer the A9 amendment as a way to focus our efforts strictly on what's truly urgent. Senator Pratt offers the A9 amendment. At the appropriate time, the Secretary will report the A9 amendment. Senator Pratt moves to amend Senate file number 33 as follows. Page 1, line 7, delete A. This is the A9 amendment. Senator Friends. Thank you, Mr. President. I would like to request a roll call on the A-9. Roll call has been requested. Roll call granted. Senator Pratt. Well, thank you, Mr. President. I want to thank my friend, Senator uh, Friends, for doing that before I had a chance to. Uh, members, the, uh, the A-9 amendment just simply strips out the future appropriation. It appropriates money for this fiscal year 
uh, strips out the future appropriation, puts it back into the budgeting process where it belongs. Because as Senator Murphy explained in her A7 amendment, this adds money to the Attorney General's base in perpetuity. And I think that's a discussion that needs to be held in the budgeting process in its entirety, not just for this specific bill. Senator Murphy, to the A9 amendment. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you to Senator Pratt. This is a discussion we had in the Finance Committee. I would ask members to vote no on Senator Pratt's amendment. Uh, having the responsibility in past careers of hiring talent and bringing people into an organization, it is hard to imagine that it would be successful for the Attorney General's office to hire a, a criminal attorney for five months temporarily without the commitment going forward. And therefore, I think that this is flawed for the purpose of pursuing justice, and I would ask you to vote no. Any additional discussion on the A9 amendment? Senator Pratt, you're going to be the last person. I just want to make sure that no one else wants to speak to A9 amendment. Take a moment, Mr. President. I'll wait. Seeing none, Senator Pratt. Thank you, Mr. President. <laughs> well, uh, Mr. President, I, I will respectfully disagree with my colleague uh, and the chief author. This is not just about, you know, as Senator Murphy has said, and we tried in an earlier amendment to have it specifically towards hiring new staff. But this is going well beyond that. This is going to enhance enforce, criminal enforcement and related initiatives, which is not held specifically to hiring additional attorneys. We already tried that. We tried that in a, in a, in a previous amendment. What this will do is give the Attorney General, though, money and resources to help the county attorneys in their efforts. And Mr. President, while you and I served on the Jobs Committee, we know often that state agencies will post positions before there's funding available for them. We saw that with the Department of Employment and Economic Development on several occasions, where as we were working on the final budget, we saw the job postings that were out there. They were already accepting applications and doing interviews. And so to Senator Murphy's point, this will not hire somebody for five months and not keep their funding going. It will make sure our county attorneys get the funding that they need and the support that they need. And the Attorney General can look at his, as we go through the budgeting process, the additional $2 million a year that he expects to get, and he can put those requisitions out there before the funding is approved. Every state agency's done it before, and I suspect they'll do it again. So members, there's absolutely no reason not to vote for the A9 amendment. The secretary will take the roll. <laughs> members, please vote. Senator Roden, for those voting under Rule 40.7. Mr. President, I report that Senator Aaron May Quaid votes no. May Qua Senator May Quaid votes no. And I report that Senator Latz votes no. Senator Latz votes no. Senator Jasinski, for those voting under Rule 40.7. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Draheim votes aye. Senator Draheim votes aye. All those having voted that had a desire to vote, the secretary will close the roll. There being 32 ayes and 34 noes, the amendment is not adopted. Senator Lucero. Thank you, Mr. President. This is a very important conversation that we are having. Adding additional resources to the Attorney General's office. Mr. President, 
I know every one of our districts is different. But those great people that I represent, the overwhelming majority of them, are for law enforcement, are for law and order, and they do not trust Attorney General Keith Ellison. We have seen much criminal activity in the last number of years, even before COVID. And it's gone unanswered by the Attorney General. He has sat silent. There are many examples. We saw the, the criminal riots happening across Minneapolis. I distinctly remember the criminal attack on our great Capitol building, the one that we're in. And I don't recall words from Attorney General Keith Ellison. We absolutely need to return to law and order. We need to return to having certainty, a swift consequence to breaking the law. And right now, we've seen criminals emboldened. Even this past weekend and week, the past week, I continue to hear pleas from those that live in Minneapolis for the criminal activity that's, that's rampaging their neighborhoods, their families, their children. And so based on this, Mr. President, again, I am not in favor. When we've asked, other members have asked the chief author to bring some clarity to related initiatives, I've not heard anything in the underlying bill that brings me any satisfaction. That, to me, that language is way too loose. It doesn't provide any clarity. It doesn't provide enough direction. So I don't want to give Attorney General Keith Ellison more dollars that don't have very strict parameters around them. So with that, Mr. President, I would like to offer the A-14 Amendment. Senator Lucero offers the A-14 Amendment. At the appropriate time, the Secretary will report the A-14 Amendment. Senator Lucero moves to amend Senate File Number 33 as follows. Page 1, line 8, delete everything after general. This is the A-14 Amendment. Senator Lucero, to your amendment. Thank you, Mr. President. And I would like to make an oral amendment to this amendment. Uh, an amendment to the amendment? Correct. State your oral amendment, and Thank then the secretary will report it. Thank you, Mr. President. There are a number of places here, so I'll take it nice and slow. On line 1.2, after the word sheriffs, insert a comma. On line 1.3, the first word, and strike that. On line 1.3, after county attorneys, so the attorney is the third word in that sentence, put a comma, and insert and state patrol. So after those edits, that line would read, to make grants to county sheriffs, comma, county attorneys, comma, and Probably it should read the State Patrol, not just State Patrol, the State Patrol. And then that same series of amendments, or changes I should say, would happen on line 1.7. Afterward, sheriffs, put a comma, strike the word and, after county attorneys, put a comma, Mr. And insert and the state patrol. Uh, Senator Ress, Mr. for what Pre purpose do you rise? Mr. President, I wonder uh, if uh, Senator Lucero would get a um, uh, reviser here, and let's have the let's have his uh, amendment to the amendment in writing, and we and we can wait. But, All right, um, Sen Senator Lucero. Usually, when there's a more than one word or two words, we really would appreciate it to be in writing just so that we're able to really follow along and make sure that we have your amendment correct. Um, would you mind withdrawing your amendment and then we'll give you time to do that and we can go on it to if there's another amendment? Can you do 
And, Lu uh, and Senator Lucero, I want to turn your attention just, just so that you, um, uh, just so you know that I'm asking kindly, but I could just ask for it to be done. Under Rule 27.1, it says a motion or amendment must be in writing if a member requests. It has been uh, requested. It must identify the member or committee uh, offering it, but that's, it must be in writing. So the requests have been made, uh, so I ask that you do it, or I'll just say that her point is well taken. Mr. Mr. President, what I'll do is, or her request is well taken. Thank you, Mr. President. I will withdraw, temporarily withdraw my A14 amendment so I can get those oral amendments into written form. Thank you so much. The, the A14 amendment has been withdrawn. Any further? Mr. President. Uh, 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 Senator Rest, for what purpose uh, do you rise? Uh, I just want to thank um, uh, Senator Lucero for honoring my request. Thank you. Any additional amendments? Uh, Senator Howe. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, before I af offer the amendment, I would, I would like to ask uh, Senator Murphy if she would yield for a question. Senator Murphy, will you yield? She will yield. Senator Howe. Thank you, Mr. President and Senator Murphy. The question I have is you stated numerous times that there were, there were 12 attorney generals. There's 12 attorneys for... A, assigned a criminal prosecution when you worked in the, uh, in the uh, Attorney General's office, and I'm not going to ask you when that was, but could you tell me about how many attorneys there were total in the office at that time? Senator Murphy, to the question. Thank you, Mr. President, and thank you, Senator Howe. I worked in the Attorney General's office in 1997, and. 1998, I just gotten out of high school. Um, that part's a joke. Um, thank you. Uh, at that time, in 1998, there were uh, 260 attorneys uh, and around 500 people who worked in the full office of the Attorney General. Senator Howell. Uh, thank you. Would, the, uh, would Senator Murphy continue to yield? Senator Murphy, will you continue to yield? She will. Uh, Senator Howe. Uh, thank you. So, I, and I believe, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that that staff is, is close to what they have today. Is that not correct? Really? Senator Murphy, to the question. Thank you, Mr. President and Senator Howe. In 2023, there are approximately 150 attorneys and a staff of about 340 people in the Attorney General's office, so no, they are not alike. Senator Howell. Well, uh, thank you, uh, Senator Murphy, but I think what the point I was trying to make is that it is up to the Attorney General to decide how many staff he has working where and what they do. And uh, I think it's important to, to, to get that illustration out there that just because there's, there's half as many that doesn't mean even if they cut that in half, there should have been about six at least there. But the Attorney General has his prerogative on where he puts his staff and where they're going to work and what they're going to take up. But uh, with that, uh, what I have found talking to my county attorney, prosecuting attorneys do not do the investigations. What they do is they take the investigation material from a investigating office, such as the sheriff's office or an auditor, and they prosecute it. So in that realm, Mr. President, I would like to offer the A13 amendment. Senator Howe offers the A13 amendment. At the appropriate time, the secretary will report the amendment. Senator Howe moves to amend Senate File 33 as follows. Page 1, line 7. Delete 269,000 and insert 19,000. This is the A13 amendment. Senator Howe, to your amendment. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. And the reason, you know, during the campaign, I heard a lot about all of the fraud that was done, and there was no one prosecuted. So... What I think is important here 
is to have someone take a look at and investigate all the fraud that has gone on in all the different areas and to help and turn that information over to the Attorney General so someone can be held accountable for what went on. So what this amendment does is it takes $250,000 a year out of, the, out of the appropriation and gives it to the OLA for the specific purposes of uh, conducting investigations into for the fraud of in our state agencies and grant programs so that we can bring some of these folks to be accountable for the waste, fraud, and abuse that has happened in our state government over the past few years. I'll stand for questions. Point Senator, Senator Friends. Oh. Thank you, Mr. President. I would like to request a roll call for the amendment. A roll call uh, has been requested, a roll call granted. Uh, Senator, uh, Senator Klein. Point of order, Mr. President, under Rule 35.2. This is a non-germane amendment. It appropriates money to the legislative auditor, clearly not the original purpose or intent of the bill. I ask you to rule it out of order. Senator Howell, and then I'm ready to, to, uh, to rule. Thank you, Senator Howell. Mr. President, this is totally germane to the issue because what we're doing here is it talks about enhanced criminal uh, enforcement and related in initiatives. This is right down that lane. He cannot prosecute anything if it's not investigated. What this does is it gives them the investigation authority to get the information in order to help that initiative of doing the prosecution. Mr. President, it's totally a germane, and I ask you to find the point not well taken. Senator Pratt. Thank you, Mr. President. Advice? Advice? Uh, Mr. President, while I understand uh, why uh, uh, Senator uh, Klein is, is citing 35.2. The fact of the matter is it does not substantially change the bill because it leaves the out-year appropriation in place. It simply reduces it by, a simple, by an amount. It still leaves 1.7 million instead of uh, 2 million in the out years and simply redirects a portion of it to do the fraud investigation a, let's call it, um, uh, criminal enhancement, so to speak, to find fraud in these areas. And so we're just trying to have some say as far as how these funds are being used. Um, it, does, it, it, does, it does reduce, but it does not remove the spending in the underlying bill. And therefore, I think it should be found germane. Mr. Uh, President. Advice? Thank this you. is the last point of advice, and then I'm going to rule. Uh, thank, Senator Lucero. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, advice. So I am looking at page 24, 35.2 of the temporary rules of the Senate, and it defines what a non germane amendment uh, is. And among those, it says relates to a substantially different subject, and number, or number two, is intended to accomplish a substantially different purpose. Now, in the debate on Senate File 1, I had an amendment, an amendment to the amendment was, was offered to my amendment, and at which it was effectively a DE. And it, not only was it a DE on my amendment, but it completely reversed it altogether, which was clearly substantially different. And so it is now, as of last Friday's debate, the custom and usage that an entire, the, the entire original amendment can be changed and done away with. In this case, this is an amendment to a bill that does not substantially change the bill. It does not introduce a substantially different subject because of the new custom and usage that was established. So, Mr. President, I would urge you to find the point of order not well taken. My ruling is the point of order is well taken. Mr. President, I'd like to make a vote to overrule the ruling of the President. Mr. Senator President, Diesick? Mr. President, I ask for a roll call vote. Roll call vote has been requested. A roll call vote has been granted. As you know, under the rules, um, a groom vote, uh, um, 
um, uh, articulates that, that the President's ruling is upheld, a red vote uh, goes against the ruling of the President. The Secretary will take the roll. Members, please vote. Senator Bolden. Thank you, Mr. President. I report that Senator May Quaid votes aye. Senator May Quaid votes aye. And I report that Senator Latz votes aye. Senator Latz votes aye. She reported those voting under Rule 40.7. Senator Jasinski, for those voting under Rule 40.7. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Dreheim votes no. Senator Dreheim votes no. The Secretary will close the roll. There have been 34 ayes and 33 noes. The decision of the president is upheld. Hmm. Senator Lucero. Thank you, Mr. President. I would like to reintroduce my A14 amendment. Uh, Senator Lucero reintroduces the A14 amendment. A at the appropriate time, the secretary will report the amendment. Senator Lucero moves to amend Senate file number 33 as follows. Page one, line eight, delete everything after general. This is the A14 amendment. Senator Friends. Thank you, Mr. President. I would request a roll call. Roll call vote has been requested. Roll call vote granted. Senator Lucero. Thank you, Mr. President. And uh, thank you to you and to Senator Rest as well. Uh, I do have that oral amendment now as the A50 amendment to the amendment that I would like to offer. Senator Lucero offers the A15? 50 what? amendments, Five which zero. is the amendment to the amendment. At the appropriate time, the secretary will report the amendment to the amendment. Senator Lucero moves to amend the A14 amendment to Senate file number 33 as follows. Page one, line two, after sheriffs, insert a comma. This is the A50 amendment. Senator Friends. Thank you, Mr. President. I would like to request a roll call on the amendment. Senator Friends. Um, a roll call has been requested, roll call granted. Senator Lucero. Thank you, Mr. President. Okay, so as we can see now uh, in written form, what my amendment to the amendment is seeking to do is in addition to county sheriffs and county attorneys to insert the state patrol in that list. And so that the funds that are seeking to be appropriated here in 2023 would not go to the Attorney General, but instead go to the county sheriffs, the county attorneys, and to the State Patrol for the prosecution of violent crimes and crimes that financially harm consumers and businesses. Why is that important, Mr. President? When well, I should also add in year 2024, it appropriates more than $2 million for that same endeavor. The prosecution of violent crimes and crimes that financially harm consumers and businesses. Mr. President, as I was saying in my earlier introduction of the A14 Amendment, the great residents of the district that I represent and a significant portion of the state of Minnesota does not trust Attorney General, General Keith Ellison. There is a high interest in returning to the confidence of law and order, the safety that all Minnesotans expect and deserve to have when they walk the streets, when they operate their lives, when they go for a cup of coffee, when they go to pick up their children from daycare, when they're dropping or picking up their children from after school sports, or if they're just driving down the highway, if they park their car 
to not have the catalytic converter stolen, if they're doing their homework or helping their children do homework at their kitchen table in the evening, to not have bullets come through the windows or the walls, that our great capital would actually stand for order and not chaos. And in all of these things, we have not seen Keith Ellison standing up for law-abiding Minnesotans. Instead, he has spent his time in office going after business owners that are trying to make a living. He has sat silent while crime has exploded. Minnesotans across our great state, they trust our county sheriffs because they stand for law and order. They trust our county attorneys because our county attorneys are actually trying to lock up many of these criminal thugs that are impeding high quality of life. And they trust our state patrol. In fact, just as we were debating Senate File 1 the other day. There was an event in another part of the country that had a threat, a potential threat, for an uprising here in our area. And the State Patrol, my understanding, was on the ready, ready to stand for law-abiding Minnesotans. And so we need to Send these funds to those that are actually doing work to keep the peace, actually working to reduce crime in Minnesota, the double-digit skyrocketing crime rate year over year, while Keith, Attorney General Keith Ellison sits silent. So with that, Mr. President, I would urge a green vote on my amendment to the amendment. Senator Dizek. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, members, I'm going to point out again the packet that's on your desk. Um, it's, the first letter is from the County Attorneys Association, uh, from Robert Small. If you go to the next letter from the Cook County Attorney, it mentions that 24 county attorney offices in Minnesota have two or fewer attorneys, and there are 14 county attorneys with just three attorneys. They don't have the capacity to do this. They are asking us to give this money to the AG so that they can build up their capacity to help these rural counties. If you go to the front letter from Mr. Small, it does talk about how Attorney General Ellison has personally visited with county attorneys. He has regular meetings with them and he listened to their concerns. He cares about public safety in this state. He is working to help improve public safety in this state and this bill will help provide public safety across the state and it will help deliver funds to help his office help counties across the state. If you go to the letter from the Winona County Attorney, she mentions, by supporting SF33, you will be making a smart investment in public safety. The Attorney General's office and their criminal vision will help public safety across the state. I urge you to vote no on this amendment. Senator Johnson. Thank you, Mr. President. I was wondering if Senator Lucero would yield for question. Senator Lucero, will you yield? He will yield. Senator Johnson. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Lucero, would these grants uh, be uh, eligible for county sheriffs and county attorneys to hire outside counsel, much like the uh, Attorney General Office does in certain situations, reach out for violent crimes. Uh, I know they've got uh, uh, SAGs in their office that are funded by outside groups to help on their special interest litigation. Uh, just wondering if these same grants would allow counties to augment their prosecutorial forces uh, when a crime comes up. Senator Lucero. Thank you, Mr. President, and thank you, Minority Lead Johnson, for that fantastic question. I would draw members' attention to the word for the prosecution, or words, for the prosecution of violent crimes. There's no stipulations or limitations there. 
That would allow the flexibility of our county attorneys to take whatever steps are necessary in order to bring law and order to those that seek to thumb their nose at Minnesota's peace and safety. And so, Mr. President, the answer is yes. My amendment, an amendment to the amendment, would absolutely go above and beyond and cut out the middleman, Attorney General Keith Ellison, and bring the dollars directly to our counties so they can do the best decisions possible to keep us safe. No Senator Johnson. Question. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Murphy. Thank you, Mr. President and members. As I listen uh, to this debate, I am taking a deep breath, recognizing how an amendment uh, can serve uh, as an attack on a person's integrity, and in this case, on the attack, an attack on the Attorney General's integrity. Um, I don't like that one bit. Uh, I don't think that belongs here in the Senate, and I don't think it advances the cause of justice. I will say that since 2019, working within the law and with our 87 county attorneys, the Attorney General's office has prosecuted homicides, serious criminal sexual conduct, and other crimes in Aiken County, Becker County, Beltrami County, Big Stone County, Carleton, Chippewa, Clearwater, Cook, Cottonwood, Dodge, Fillmore, Grant, Hennepin, Houston, Jackson, Kennebec, LeSueur, Morrison, Pennington, Pope, Ramsey, Red Lake, Renville, Roseau, Todd, Traverse, and Wilkin counties. Prosecuted, engaged in serious criminal prosecution. In Freeborn County, the county attorney who trusted the attorney general turned a case over. The attorney general secured a prosecution of a person, Devin Wyland, on three counts of attempted murder in the first degree, including one count against a police officer. I, I, I have to say I appreciate the candor, the, the honesty of Senator Lucero in stating his intended purpose for this amendment, which is about trust, and trust of uh, duly elected constitutional officers. But I will say that Minnesotans elected the current Attorney General, General Ellison, and I respect them. And he's doing the job, and we need to give him the resources to do what he can do with our county attorneys to pursue justice for Minnesotans. Vote no. Senator Lucero, you will be the last person. I want to make sure that no one else wants to speak, because once you speak, we will vote. Senator Lucero. Thank you, Mr. President. And I would just briefly like to ask Majority Leader Dietzik a question, if she would yield. Will you yield? She will yield. Senator Lucero. Thank you, uh, Mr. President, and thank you, Senator Dietzik. Uh, you read a, a number of letters from uh, several county attorneys that were speaking in favor of the underlying bill. Do you have any letters that speak for or against my amendment or amendment to the amendment? Senator Dietzik. Could you, um, Mr. President, thank, thank you, Mr. Uh, Senator Lucero. Could you repeat the question again? Senator Lucero. Absolutely. Mr. President and Senator Dietzik, do you have any letters from county attorneys that speak for or against my amendment or amendment to the amendment? Senator Dietzik. Uh, I just saw your um, amendment, so I haven't had a chance to talk to them. So I don't have anything in front of me, and I don't know if they support it. Um, I do know that they support getting this money to the county attorney the, the Attorney General to help county attorneys. Senator Lucero. Thank you, Mr. President. And that's exactly my point. They wrote letters for the bill that was in front of them. But I'm offering them something better. 
I'm offering them direct funds that would go towards their efforts. These county attorneys, the sheriff's departments, the state patrol are in desperate need of help. And if they were in support of having a middleman, the attorney general, there's certainly going to be an even greater enthusiastic support of having the funds directly available to them. And so with that, Mr. President, I encourage a green vote on the amendment to the amendment. The secretary will take the roll on the amendment to the amendment. We are voting on the amendment to the amendment, the A50. Members, please vote. Senator Bowden, for those voting under Rule 40.7. Thank you, Mr. President. I report a no vote for Senator McQuaid. S no vote for Senator McQuaid. And I report a no vote for Senator Latz. Senator Latz votes no. Senator Jasinski, for those voting under Rule 40.7. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Dreheim votes aye. Senator Dreheim votes aye, and the secretary will close the roll. There being 33 ayes and 34 noes, the amendment to the amendment is not adopted. We are now on the underlining amendment. Senator Jaskowski, okay. The secretary will take the roll on the underlining amendment. There was a, uh, there was a roll call vote requested. That's correct, right? All right, here we go. The, there's a roll call vote uh, requested on the underlining A14 amendment. The secretary will take the roll. <laughs> Members, please vote. Senator Bowden, for those voting under Rule 40.7. Thank you, Mr. President. I report that Senator May Quaid votes no. Senator May Quaid votes no. And Senator Latz votes no. Senator Latz votes no. Senator Jasinski, for Thank those voting under 40.7. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Dreheim votes aye. Senator Dreheim votes aye. The secretary will close the roll. With there being 33 ayes and 34 noes, the amendment is not adopted. Senator Jus Jaskowski. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, members. It's, um, it's been an interesting th experience listening to the discussion on the floor today and then also in committee. I'm, I'm on the state government and local government finance committee. And, um, you know, we had the Attorney General's office, Mr. President, there at the committee meeting, and I had a chance to ask him about some things. One of the areas that I'm very concerned about in our government is fraud. We, we have a state government that seems to be full of fraud, and we have the majority bringing even more government programs that are going to be submitted to and very likely overrun with fraud as well. I'm concerned, my constituents are concerned. I had discussions with the, attorney, the Deputy Attorney General in front of the committee, and I asked him, you know, what are you doing about the feeding our future fraud? Uh, we've got, I mean, this is, a, members, if you haven't been uh, tuning into this, this is, this is an organized crime network, it appears, $250 million of the taxpayers' money was essentially stolen 
And state government has stood by and acted as if they had nothing to do with it. And it may be as much as $500 million, Mr. President, we don't know. But I asked the, I asked the Deputy Attorney General, what has your office done uh, not only to investigate the fraud and, and the people who perpetrated it directly, but what about our state government? What has government do, done in order to ameliorate this situation and bring an end to this type of fraud and bring some accountability? Members, we have 35,000 people in this state government. That doesn't include the University of Minnesota. I did some digging myself on this, and, and uh, the, the Minnesota Office of Management Budget has a unit that uh, goes in and does training with the different agencies um, around internal controls and accountability, I think is the name of their unit. And so I, I was reading their summary of what they were doing to stop fraud in state government. Well, between 2019 and 2020, uh, they had 701 supervisors attend 11 supervisor core sessions in training around modules for internal control pre-work. Another 269 managers attended another seven manager core sessions in those two years. So I don't completely, Mr. President, understand what that represents but that's a thousand people in state government that are supposed to help us attack some of this fraud. And then there was another 18,000 or 19,000 people trained in another area, and we hear another 22,000 trained in 2020 in that same area, and we hear the Office of Management and Budget crow about how much training they got done. And Mr. President, I also have read some of the training materials myself. And when it comes to this feeding our future fraud, they actually bring up the fact that in the training for the people who attended the training, that they were told as soon as fraud is evident to you, as soon as it's evident, it's your responsibility as an employee of our state government to report it to the Office of the Legislative Auditor. We have two statutes that require that, two of them. And in that training, they also tell them the consequences. You know, if, if you're an employee and you see this fraud and you don't report it, you know, you can be disciplined, you can be relieved of duty, and you could end up in jail. That's in the training materials, Mr. President, of our state government. And so, you know, I'm asking this Deputy Attorney General what he and the Attorney General's office is doing to help this problem, and I, I hear crickets. I hear a diversion. I hear, uh, uh, you know, I uh, basically was thrown off course by the discussion because the office didn't want to entertain directly the discussion. Um, but as a matter of fact, Mr. President, last fall, I sent a letter to the Office of the Legislative Auditor to ask them, what is it that you have heard from the Minnesota Department of Education that oversees this $500 million of the people's money? And they responded back and said, the Office of the Legislative Auditor has no record that the Minnesota Department of Education or Governor Walz notified the OLA about the potential misuse of public money. The OLA found out about it in the newspapers last January like the rest of us did. So members, like Senator Lucero, Mr. President, I am frustrated with the Office of the Attorney General. Not to mention that there's no pursuit of feeding our future fraud. There's no pursuit of the Department of Education, which somebody in that department should lose their job. Maybe multiple people in the right type of situation should lose their job because under their noses, millions and millions and millions, a half a billion dollars left the barn and probably at least half of that 
was wasted and spent fraudulently. So Mr. President, I also was around, as everybody else was, in the summer of 2020 when they burned down Minneapolis. Rioters burned down our biggest city, and our government's response was horrible. I didn't see leadership from the Attorney General's office. I certainly didn't see it from the Chief Executive's office. And certainly the mayor of Minneapolis is suspect as well. But we have to start bringing back safety to our state again. If we don't do that, we as legislators are as guilty as anybody else. We are the ones that are responsible, as well as Attorney General Ellison, the governor, and others. And that's why we're here today. We're trying to bring forward legislation that will make our state a better and safer place. Um, I'd like to offer uh, an amendment to um, Senate File 33, uh, the A-16 amendment, Mr. President. Senator Jaskowski offers the A-16 amendment. At the appropriate time, the Secretary will report the amendment. Senator Draskowski moves to amend Senate file number 33 as follows. Page 1, line 8, delete everything after general. This is the A16 amendment. Senator Friends. Thank you, Mr. President. I would like to request a roll call on the amendment to the amendment and to the underlying amendment. Senator Friends offers, excuse me, has requested a roll call vote. Roll call has been requested. Roll call granted. Senator Draskowski. Thank you, um, Mr. President. I do not have an amendment to the amendment, but uh, simply this singular amendment. And members, what this amendment does is that it uh, directs the Attorney General with this money that is appropriated in the bill that's before us, Senate File 33, uh, that he go forward and develop a program. I call it the Make Minneapolis Safe Again program to prevent riots, mass destruction of the public and private property, and ensure that individuals who make our biggest city unsafe are held accountable. That's the amendment, to bring safety to our biggest city. Mr. President, people are fleeing Minneapolis. I can't tell you how many people that I knocked on their door in my district over the last election that told me, they said, Steve, you know what? I used to go to Minneapolis all the time. We won't even go there anymore. We'd go to the dinner theater. We'd go there for a ball game. We'd go there for the other cultural activities that they, it, it offers. And they aren't going there anymore. People are fleeing our biggest city. And that's because the people that are supposed to keep us safe, making the decisions, and among them, on the top of the list is the Attorney General's office. And uh, I agree with Senator Lucero. I think people in our state have lost confidence in this Attorney General because he is not holding people accountable when they violate other people's safety and their freedoms. And what this amendment does is helps the Attorney General out with this particular appropriation and says, Attorney General, Let's make sure these types of riots never happen again. If you see them, you need to hold them accountable and prosecute them. Prosecute them to the extent of the law so that we can bring back a semblance of order and safety to our state again. Thank you, Mr. President. Roll call has been requested and a roll call has been granted. Seeing no further discussion, the Secretary will take the roll. Members, please vote. <clears throat> Senator Bowden, for those voting under Rule 40.7. Thank you, Mr. President. I report that Senator May Quaid votes no. Senator May Quaid votes no. And Senator Latz votes no. Senator Latz votes no. Senator 
Senator Jaszewski, for those voting under Rule 40.7. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Dreheim votes aye. S Senator Dreheim votes aye. The secretary will close the roll. With 33 ayes and 34 noes, the amendment is not adopted. The secretary will give the bill its third reading. Senate file number 33, a bill for an act relating to public safety, appropriating money to the Office of the Attorney General to provide legal services for enhanced criminal enforcement and related initiatives. Third reading. Senator Pratt. Well, thank you, Mr. President. Let me start off by saying we all want to support public safety. Republicans stood behind our law enforcement officers against the defund the police movement. We have been there every step of the way supporting the residents of Minnesota and saying they deserve to feel safe in their community, safe in their homes, as we watch crime continue to rise. At the beginning of session, Senator Dietzik talked about working collaboratively. This is a bill that should have strong bipartisan support. You know, I, I was thinking back to, to Senator Kroon's comments earlier today when he stated that Many of us heard Minnesotans talking about public safety and their concerns, and they wanted more resources to go to crime prevention and a prosecution of criminals and holding those criminals accountable. Now, Senator Murphy justifies the urgency of this bill by answering that call that Senator Kroon talked about. Regretfully, this bill falls short. Now, during my time in the Senate, I have come to realize that words matter. I've been a part of discussions and bills where we've heard, well, that won't happen. We don't need that language. That won't happen. And the very next month, the very next year, something happens that we didn't expect to or intended to, and we've been told, well, that's what the law says. And despite, going back to Senator Dietzik's comments about working collaboratively, despite Senate Republicans' efforts to work across the aisle in committee and here today, there seems to be no desire for collaboration. Mr. President, we had some pretty simple amendments. We had an amendment to take the bill and have it targeted to what the author and the Attorney General originally drafted. instead of to enhance law enforcement, criminal enforcement, and related initiatives. We wanted it to be specific, so Minnesotans knew that as we were spending this addi these additional funds, they were going to truly have an impact on the concerns that Minnesota families have. We were told, no, we don't need that. It's covered by Section 801, which limits the, what the Attorney General can do. Okay? That initial amendment was defeated on a party-line vote. Senator Cruin then said, okay, well, let's add an amendment that ties this funding to Section 801. Senator Murphy told us the Attorney General and these funds would be constrained by the Attorney General's already existing statutory constraints. Seems reasonable. That amendment was defeated on a party line vote. 
after being told this was what was going to constrain the Attorney General, there was no desire, no willingness to ensure that those two ideas matched up. In committee, we asked the Attorney General about how many times they've had to decline requests from county attorneys, how many times he's had to uh, say no because he didn't have the resources. And so Senator Draham offered a very respectful and reasonable amendment to say, we as a legislature should know how often the Attorney General isn't able to meet the request under Section 801 of the law. Again, Section 801 that describes the Attorney General's relationship to the county attorneys and the stated purpose of this bill. Because the Attorney General couldn't answer that. I presume since he couldn't answer it, there's no reporting to tell him that. That failed on a party line vote. And Mr. President, this bill is a financial gimmick to increase the base budget of the Attorney General outside of our long-standing procedures. So I had an amendment that said, let's give the Attorney General the funding he needs today because he can utilize those funds today. He's not going to hire these new attorneys tomorrow. You and I sit on the Jobs Committee. We know the shortfall in labor force and how hard it is to find people to take these jobs. We have more job openings than job applicants. And let's put the outgoing funds, the increase to the base, through the long-standing procedure that we have of setting targets and having thorough discussions in context of the entire budget, because this is not what Senator Murphy said it was. This is not to help county attorneys. This is not to help with prosecutions. This is an increase to the Attorney General's base to be used at his discretion. Now, that's not a slam on the Attorney General. I quite honestly don't trust a lot of people in government. I don't, when I'm spending money, I don't hardly trust anybody. I want to make sure it's being used for the specific purpose that I said. It's not a personal attack on the Attorney General. Now, there are some in this chamber that may not trust the Attorney General. That's their prerogative. I would say that there are a number of Minnesotans that might share that view. Sarah Murphy said, well, I trust the people who elected because he was elected by the, the people of Minnesota. And he's right. She's right. But we also have to keep in mind that only 11 counties voted for this attorney general. And he won by a half a percentage point. That is very, very tight. My issue isn't with the Attorney General. My issue is in good governance and making sure that we are good stewards of the people's money. Because every dollar we spend here is coming out of the budget of a hardworking Minnesota family. This is a core function of government to make sure that they are safe. And I applaud what Senator Murphy has described. I would vote for a bill that said what Senator Murphy described. Members, that's not the bill we have in front of us today, and I urge you to vote no. Senator Lucero. Thank you, Mr. President, and thank you so much, Senator Pratt, for those very important comments. And I'm going to add just a few remarks, very briefly, that touch on what Senator Pratt, Mr. President, said, and then to address some of what Senator Murphy, the chief author of the bill, said. So yes, I, I thank you, Mr. President and Senator Murphy, for your acknowledging my being honest, because that is what I always do, as I'm honest. In my representation of the great people of my communities, I'm honest. And so, 
I had the opportunity here to look up some of the numbers on the race and just to show in regards to my remarks earlier and how they pertain to the Attorney General related to Mr. President Senator Murphy's remarks and to take off of what Senator Pratt said. In the Attorney General's race, there was just shy of 2.5 million votes cast. And they separated, the two top vote getters were separated by 0.84 of a percent. 0.84 percent out of nearly 2.5 million cast. And that results in less, slightly less than 21,000 votes total. So less than 21,000 votes out of 2.5 million cast, that is almost 50-50. In fact, it's 49.53 percent to 50.37 percent. Mr. President, that is not a mandate by any means or confidence in the Attorney General. There are 49.53 percent of Minnesotans who voted in the last election who do not support Attorney General Keith Ellison. 49.53 percent. This body, Mr. President, is 34 to 33. With only a few thousand votes separating us as an institution statewide and only several hundred votes for the closest seat of the 67. Minnesota is nearly 50-50. There is no mandate, no mandate. Minnesotans do want us to work together. And we offered reasonable, common sense, keep the peace, support law enforcement amendments that acknowledge the 0.84% separation that Attorney General Keith Ellison barely won by. And so, Mr. President and Senator Murphy, yes, I am in the group that doesn't trust Attorney General Keith Ellison. I am seeking to have our hard-earned tax dollars to bypass his office and go directly to where the help is needed the most. And so, Mr. President, we are going to continue, when I say we, I'm referring to myself, and the 33 members of this body are going to continue to work hard, reaching across the aisle, bringing forth common sense amendments. But unfortunately, they continue to be voted down as if there's some 75 to 85 percent mandate in the state, when the reality is it's nearly 50-50. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Kuhn. Kuhn. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, as I stated earlier, I support the intent of this bill. I support more resources to county attorneys to prosecute violent crime. What I've heard from my voters in campaigning all spring, summer, and fall, it was abundantly clear what they want us to do is work together. And so, this bill came before me on the Judiciary Committee, and I didn't care that it was authored by a Democrat. I heard about a problem that was facing the county attorneys. It had the support of the county attorneys. And the bill, as originally drafted, would have solved that problem. And so I supported that bill. Now, it had been amended to take out the purpose of the problem, and that concerned us on the uh, Judiciary Committee, so we brought an amendment to restore it to its original draft, and that it was rejected. I nevertheless voted yes out of committee on this bill because we were assured that Section 8.01 required the Attorney General to use these funds to do what the intended purpose of this bill was. And so from that time till now, I thought, well, let's just do an amendment, just simply to, to cross-reference and cite Section 8.01, and we'll get all past this partisan nonsense. We can get directly to the purpose of what this money is supposed to do. So I made what I thought was a very simple amendment. It was not a partisan gotcha amendment. It was genuine good faith to make sure that this money went to 
the problem as it was presented to us. Um, and to my surprise, it was um, you know, rejected on a party line vote. And I'm new to this place, so I'm learning that that's how this place operates. And I get that. Um, but uh, that's not what the voters in my district want. And I'm trying here to work across the aisle to make reasonable amendments. But to Senator Pratt's point, it seems abundantly clear to me, um, just starting my fourth week here, that there is no desire for collaboration. That part seems abundantly clear to me. And so I'm faced with a difficult decision here because I want to address the problems. That's what I came here to do, not to play partisan games. Um, but I also don't feel like the bill as it's currently drafted, I don't understand the intent of, of why it was amended to take out the purpose, but I also don't feel the bill as currently amended um, addresses the problem. And um, it, it allows the Attorney General to spend this money on other things. And so um, for those reasons, um, it, it disappoints me, but I'm not going to be able to support this bill, and I urge a no vote. Thank you. So, Senator Grunhagen. Well, thank you, Mr. President. Yeah, I think all of us here want uh, law and order. We've seen uh, a lack of it over the last couple of years and what the results are. And uh, I share some of the same sentiment that's been shared by the people offering the amendments and also uh, uh, some of their concerns. You know, one of the things that uh, really concerns me about uh, our Attorney General Keith Ellison is that there was a, uh, a voter uh, ballot on replacing the Minneapolis Police Department with the Department of Public Safety. Uh, Gover Governor Walls, Senator Amy Kolbachar, and Smith both oppose that amendment. But according to published articles, Attorney General Keith Ellison supported defunding the police and creating a different Department of Public Safety. All at the time where we've seen uh, carjacking skyrocket, we've seen murders skyrocket, we've even seen small children uh, through uh, random shootings in neighborhoods, especially low income, be shot and killed, some as young, I think, under 10 years old. Uh, I mean, this is just a travesty. So when I see the actions of Attorney General uh, Ellison, I see that he seems to care more about the criminals at times rather than the victims. And rather than, you know, and we seem to create a revolving door where the police uh, arrest people for violent crimes, and yet they get right back out on the street in a short period of time to do even more problems, according to some of the rest. So uh, it's hard for me to, to, to uh, support this bill without some direction down to local sheriffs, state patrol, and also county attorneys directly, like Senator Lucero's amendment did, and simply hand it over to a person who heads up a department that actually supports defunding the police. The last comment I would make is this, is that, you know, when a police officer makes a mistake, whether deliberately or unintentionally, and I think we've seen both, there needs to be some consequences. None of us disagree with that. But to demonize all police over the actions of a few is a travesty. And unfortunately, I see Attorney General Keith Ellison joining in on demonizing all police. That's not Minnesotan. That's not for safety and lowering crime. That simply creates more victims, innocent victims, in our state and nation. Thank you, Mr. President. I can't Sen support the bill. Senator Weber. Thank you, Mr. President. The author of this bill talked about earlier the trusting the people who elected the Attorney General. Well, I did a little quick reference uh, and checking on numbers, and I went to the Secretary of State, uh, and I didn't manage to get all of the nine counties that I represent in total or just a part of. But quite frankly, Mr. President, the top vote percentage that I saw uh, for any county in my district 
was 36 percent for the Attorney General and as low as 27 percent. Basically, two-thirds of the people of my Senate district do not trust the Attorney General. I'm not going to reiterate all the reasons that have been given by my fellow caucus members as to the, the reason for that distrust. I had one of the county attorneys that had, there was a letter included today was from one of the counties in my, my district. And I agree with their desire to have additional funding for additional prosecutors and assistance to the counties because it only takes one major case for rural counties to, to be in a world of hurt financially and even for those uh, local county prosecutors who don't deal with those kind of complicated cases very often. And they do need the assistance from the Attorney General's office. Quite frankly, I would like this to be a bipartisan vote, a bipartisan bill. Why those uh, elements were removed from the bill that specifically state what the monies for the, that are allocated within this bill are for, I do not know. But all I do know is that with that type of an uh, amendment that was made, I can no longer support a bill like this. And quite frankly, I don't think that when the county attorney submitted their uh, bills or their letters of support, they envisioned that as happening as well. I think the particular phrase that gives us pause and gives us concern it talks about you know, related uh, initiatives. I've been here long enough to know that initiatives can meet a, a wide variety of things, some related to the specific purpose for which the bill was intended and others that go way off into uh, the outfield and beyond uh, that have no merit, that have no justification, and quite frankly, for that reason, I and I encourage the rest of the body to vote no. Senator Nelson. Well, thank you, Mr. President. I was glad to hear about the additional funding for our county attorneys. I know that they have been strapped in getting the necessary um, attorneys to prosecute uh, criminal activity, which, as many have said before, has been increasing greatly. And in addition, the increase in drug trafficking and the crimes associated with that. And because of that great need that I already knew was in our counties, I was able to set aside the fact that this is um, a budget year, this is where we're setting our $54 billion budget, and yet this request just came out now, not, not part of the setting the new two-year budget. So that was a little bit unusual, Mr. President. But because of the great need in our county attorneys uh, for that additional support, I could kind of look past that. It's a great need. But then I was a little bit shocked and surprised when there was this long debate and ultimately a refusal to simply require that we as legislators, Minnesota taxpayers, get a simple report about which county requests were honored and which ones were not. There, there was a big debate. I don't understand what's wrong with that. I think accountability and transparency is something we should stand on. So I'm, I'm getting a little um, concerned about that. And then the other piece that really uh, has me quite concerned is this very vague phrase that this additional money that did go through the budget process is for related initiatives. Now, we can understand how bills get refined in committees or right here on the Senate floor. And again, I was baffled as to why the majority Democrats in this Senate would, would refuse, vote down, removing that very vague language and for related expenses. So, Mr. President, I am left believing that there's something else going on here. 
It didn't go through the budget process. It has vague language about related expenses, and we can't get a transparent accounting about which county's requests were not responded to. So, Mr. President, I think we are just missing the mark here, and it is not a good government. So while I want to uh, support our county attorneys with additional uh, funding so much needed, I am hoping that we will be able to do so in a better, more transparent, more accountable, less vague way. Even if it doesn't go through the full budget process, there's no reason for the vagueness and there's no reason for covering up which, a county, which county requests had not been answered. Senator Jasinski, and just so the folks know, uh, unless someone else gets on my list, is gonna go to Senator Fateh, Senator Murphy, Senator Johnson, if he wants to say anything, and Senator Desig. That will be the order unless something else happens. I've now announced it and I'm looking around the room to make sure that we're clear. Senator Jasinski. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you for that clarity. I just want to stand up uh, and talk about it a little bit again. Uh, we all want to get more uh, criminal enforcement across our state. We've seen what's happened the last couple of years, so we want that. But uh, I will be voting against it, and, and really for three words up on the wall, N related initiatives. It's a pretty broad scope. And I, I don't think that's appropriate in our bill to be approving something like that. That could be just about anything. Uh, and a couple of comments on that. So uh, I, I could agree with the 269,000 in 2023. I think that might make sense. But for a party that has full control of the House, the, Senator, or the Senate, and the governorship, why don't you think you can get approval for the next biennium for $2 million, $2 million 61 or whatever it is? I don't understand why that can't be done. I mean, you're getting every bill you want through on a party line vote. What makes you think you can't get it in the budget for the next couple years? So frustrating. Again, we're seeing this. Uh, we've been up here. I've been here up here six years, going on my seventh year. Uh, never seen bills like this go through without talking across the aisle, without working together, without making compromise. And I know every single one of us here, all 67, heard that when they went door to door. We want to see you work together. We want to see you work together. We want to see you compromise. We want to see you make Minnesota better. It's not happening. Not anything I've seen so far. Anything controversial goes through party line votes with not even an adjustment, not even one amendment on a lot of bills. I think it, we were here this weekend, 50 some amendments, not one voted upon, not any compromise whatsoever, not one. It's frustrating. I think the people of Minnesota deserve better than that. Uh, so please uh, vote no on this. Senator Fate, briefly. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I'll try to be brief. Um, this bill went through the proper process. It was heard in committee. We had people speak on it. We had a debate on it. We had questions about it. Um, so it did go through the proper process. Uh, we've heard multiple folks speak about they cannot support this bill because, uh, A, they don't trust our attorney general making claims that he supported defund the police or uh, the ballot initiative that would have created a public safety department but still would have had police under it, um, saying that their people in their county did not support it. Um, people speaking from counties like McCloyd County, who obviously would not understand Hennepin County or Minneapolis politics, because Minneapolis is one of the most diverse cities in the state, and McCloyd County being, what, 98% white? 98% white, you can go weeks without seeing a black person in McCloyd County. Of course, they're not going to understand what's going on. That's number one. Number two, they said, hey, let's support our, uh, let's support our, our, our county attorneys instead. Let's, let's, let's have trust in them. Well, the County Attorneys Association are saying, we support our attorney general. We need his help. We can't do this on our own. 44 of 87 counties have three or fewer uh, attorneys on staff. So if you want to be the party of law and order, then support the full law enforcement, not just the police, but the prosecutions that happen after it, right? Uh, things like homicide, attempted murder, human trafficking. Uh, we had another senator from uh, Cook County saying, let's trust our county attorneys. Well, the Cook County attorney's office sent a letter saying, we need help. 
So if you don't trust our attorney general, then trust that the county attorneys that you're saying you trust, saying we need help. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Murphy. Thank you, Mr. President and members. I am going to ask you to vote for Senate File 33, which earlier today, uh, when we began this discussion, I shared that this is a funding proposal providing necessary funding for the criminal division of the Attorney General's office. We've had ample discussion about our 87 county attorneys all over the state of Minnesota, working to pursue justice for the people of Minnesota all over the state of Minnesota. The Attorney General has been seeking this funding for four years. It is clear to me now why it didn't get a fair hearing in the Senate uh, in the last four years, but it's getting a fair hearing in the Minnesota Senate today. I am, like many of you, baffled uh, that uh, it has become so partisan. I am going to spend some time thinking about what I've heard from so many members from the Republican caucus today as they talk themselves out of voting for a proposal that supports their county attorneys and their pursuit of justice, talking themselves out of voting for a common sense funding proposal, their votes perhaps colored by a lack of trust for the person who serves in the office. I could spend lots of time with all of you talking about how we could pursue a bipartisan approach, but I don't think that's appropriate for now. We need to pass this bill, get funding uh, to the Attorney General's office, so that office is in a position to support our county attorneys. That's what this is about simply. It's important, and I ask for a yes vote. Cinder Johnson. Thank you, Mr. President. I uh, appreciate that. So we just heard Senator Cruin on the floor, and uh, it seems like he's getting a little disillusioned with the process. Coming here, good faith, open heart, wanting to do good policy for the state of Minnesota. But as we move down the process in just four short weeks, we see people coming to the table wanting to improve policy to help Minnesotans across the state not take down a bill or agenda of the DFL, but to improve, to make sure that it fits for their constituents and for our constituents. Look, we had some pretty bipartisan type bill or amendments I thought would pass today. Things like the reporting requirement, a simple reporting requirement. Hey, how many uh, state's attorneys reached out for this? And how many do you have to turn down based on your resources? I think that's a pretty legitimate thing to do. How about limiting just the usage of this money into that criminal and financial aspect that uh, the Attorney General is supposed to be doing anyway? It's just insurance policy for us, and we'd be happy to put that on. I think that's good policy for the state of Minnesota and for our constituents, something that your constituents would love as well. That was voted down, party line. Okay, well, let's not do that, but let's name on there. Let's name the, the limiting to violent and financial crimes. That's, that's what this money can be used for. Again, I don't think there's a Minnesotan that you could find out there, except for maybe the author or maybe the Attorney General, who would say, no, that's, that's a terrible idea. We shouldn't take this $5 million that's bypassed the normal budgeting process that's coming up here that we're going to be doing the Attorney General's budget in. Uh, let's, let's, let's not do that. Let's quick, let's run this bill through on its own without limitation. And let's make that happen. I don't know of any Minnesotans, I don't know any constituents in my district that would be happy to do that. Well, look, we're, we're looking at a budget right, or uh, rates of crime, violent crime in the state, that from 19 to 20 escalated 16%. From 20 to 21, another 23%. There's no doubt that this state needs resources in its prosecutor's office. There is no doubt. What we are trying to do is ensure that that money gets to those prosecutor's offices so that we can clean up the state 
not only in Minneapolis, not only in St. Paul, but in East Grand Forks and in Duluth and in Rochester and in Wyndham. This is something that's critical and important to our state and our constituents. We want to be at the table. We want to be helping. We want to move this policy forward. But we are continually being cut out of the process. Republicans are here to work. We're here to improve. We want policy that works for the state of Minnesota. And this bill simply does not do it. Members, I would encourage a no vote on the, on the uh, Senate File 33. Thank you. Senator Dizek. Thank you, Mr. President. So, for anybody out there listening, this bill is not about the Attorney General. It is about public safety. I heard a lot about voters wanting us to work together, and I agree, I have said that. They want us to work together. But they also told me, when I was talking to them, they want us to be civil. They don't want us attacking each other, and I don't think they want us attacking the duly elected Attorney General. I heard a lot about public safety when I was out door knocking. Public safety is and continues to be an important issue. It is one of our core functions. That is why we are moving this bill early, is to help county attorneys across the state, many rural county attorneys, prosecute criminals in the pursuit of justice. As one of the letter states that I early, early, earlier pointed out, this bill is a smart investment in public safety. This is a critical issue for our state, and I ask for a red, sorry, I ask for a green vote. <laughs> vote yes. The secretary will take the roll on final passage. Senator Bolden, for those voting under Rule 40.7. Thank you, Mr. President. I report a yes vote for Senator McQuaid. Senator McQuaid votes yes. And a yes vote for Senator Latz. Senator Latz votes aye. Senator Jasinski, for those voting under Rule 40.7. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Dreheim votes no. Senator Dreheim votes no. Members, please vote. All senators have not voted. The, sec the secretary will close the roll. There being 35 ayes and 32 nays, the bill is passed and the title agreed to. <laughs> Members, we're on to the next bill on uh, special orders. That's Senate file number 31. Jasinski, to your bill, Senator Jasinski. Thank you, Mr. President. I have in front of us Senate file number 31. Uh, this is a bill that we approved last year, was heard, was also heard in committee this year and voted out unanimously. I want to thank my co-author Senator Lang and Senator Hoffman uh, for co-authoring this bill. This is really just a technical cleanup and a modernization of some snowmobile uh, laws. Uh, it really hits three different items on that. Uh, with the recent uh, uh, arrival of, of what we call roundabouts, uh, it's a different intersection, uh, has provided a difficulty to have a legal crossing. So uh, the first thing this bill does is allow the local road jurisdiction to deem where a safe crossing is. If you've been on a snowmobile and you want to drive safely, uh, going through a roundabout can be very difficult. Uh, you have to cross several different crossings. Uh, so what this do would allow the local road authority to designate a safe place to cross. Secondly, if you're familiar with snowmobiles or ATVs or boats, uh, snowmobiles have had registration numbers across their cowling uh, for many, many years. Uh, what we're finding uh, with the DNR, this bill is supported by the DNR and MinUSA, which is Minnesota Snowmobile Association. Uh, we're looking at eliminating the decals uh, with the numbers on there. 
Uh, what we're finding out is, is DNR officers can't read those anyways. Uh, so we're combining the numbers on a decal uh, that's a larger decal that both has the annual, uh, annual permit as well as the numbers. So it cleans that up as well. And then there's another uh, portion of the bill that uh, cleans it up and it it's designates as it a registered versus a current uh, owner. Uh, there's been issues with registered uh, owners because a lot of times a snowmobile will be purchased and it's uh, used on own private land and has never been registered. Uh, or a snowmobile has been bought and, and uh, traded with uh, snowmobile parts from a swap club or something like that. And one snowmobile or two or three snowmobiles end up being one snowmobile. And really they're not uh, tracked by registration numbers anyways. They're done by a VIN number. Uh, so this just cleans that language up uh, so that a snowmobile uh, current user can transfer title much easier. Uh, that's the three things, uh, very straightforward, uh, and I will stand for any questions. Is there any further discussion on Senate File 31? The Secretary will give it his third, the Secretary will give it his third reading. Senate File 30, number 31, a bill for an act relating to natural resources, modernizing statutes related to the registration, transfer, and operation of snowmobiles, et cetera. Third reading, Senator Herr. Uh, Mr. President, this is a bipartisan bill. Um, and with permission from Senator Hoffman, he suggests me that I should echo one of the respectable uh, senator here that used to use the term that this is a good bill. Thank you. Any further discussion? Senator Jack Jaskowski. Thank you, Mr. President. Would Senator Jasinski yield? Senator Jasinski, will you yield? He will yield. Senator Jaskowski. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Senator Jasinski. Senator Jasinski, are there any fee increases in here? I see the, there's a new word, fees, underlined in part of the bill, and was curious about that. Thank you. Senator Jasinski. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Senator Jaskowski. No, there are no new fees, no different fees. Uh, this combines the registration numbers with the decal and actually will save the snowmobile or, or the ATV or the motorcycle owner uh, the uh, cost of putting separate numbers on there. So it's a cost-saving measure for our Minnesotans across the state. Thank you. Any further discussion? Senator uh, Westrom. Mr. Mr. President, uh, just a question for Senator, uh, the author. A uh, question for who, Senator? For the author, Mr. Ch Mr. President, the author. Senator Jasinski will Mr. yield. He will yield. Senator Westrom. Mr. President, Senator Jasinski, uh, just confirming that there's nothing that's changing trespassing laws in, in here as well. I know that's been a topic of discussion, enhancing, increasing penalties uh, on snowmobile trails. Uh, just wanted to confirm that uh, that's, not, that's not in here. Uh, as you're as we're moving this through, I didn't hear you talk about any of it. Senator Jasinski. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, there has been some discussion in the House of that uh, portion of the bill. In this bill, it does not uh, include anything changed there as well. There was some discussion about following the snow wheel too closely, uh, but we decided not to keep that in the bill either. Senator Westham, seeing no further discussion, the Secretary will take the, the role on the final passage of Senate File 31. Members, please vote. All those who, all those haven't voted. Oh. I'm sorry. Senator Bowden, for those voting under Rule 40.7. Thank you, Mr. President. I report that Senator May Quaid votes aye. Senator May Quaid votes aye. Senator Latz votes aye. Senator Latz votes aye. Senator Juzinski. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Dreheim votes aye. Senator Dreheim votes aye. Mr. President, I also report that Senator Mitchell votes aye. Senator Mitchell votes aye. All those, uh, will the Secretary close the room? There being 67 ayes and zero nays, the bill is passed and the title agreed to. <laughs> Senator, uh, oh. yes. Members, we are now on um, thir the 13th order of business, announcements of Senate interests. The announcements of Senate interests. Senator Hofschild. 
Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I want to let members know you should get should have gotten a notification from the tax committee that we'll be receiving local option sales tax requests from municipalities. Um, Senator Nelson uh, and I will be reviewing those, and I appreciate her expertise and look forward to working with her on that um, in an ad hoc fashion so that we can get those going. Um, so please let your municipalities know the deadline is tomorrow so they can submit it tomorrow yet. Thanks. Senator Ress, we're uh, on the 13th you. order of business for announcements of Senate interest. Uh, thank you, um, Mr. President. I just want to remind members and staff that a meet and greet will be held in um, uh, the conference room in 3.30 of the Capitol for um, uh, Commissioner Paul Marquardt, the Commissioner of um, Revenue. We hope he will come particularly those that have not had the pleasure and honor of meeting him, and come and have a cup of coffee and a donut with us. Thank you very much. Without, further, without objection, without objection, the following senators will be excused from today's session. Senator Westrom from 1030 to 1130 AM and 515 PM to 545 PM. Senator Kunish. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I just would like to remind the uh, Senate Posse Caucus members that we will meet immediately after uh, we recess over in the um, Majority Leader's office over there. Thank you. Any further announcements? Any further announcements? Mr. President. Uh, uh, Senator Johnson. Thank you. And uh, would uh, Senator Dietzik please yield to a question? Senator Dietzik, will you yield? She will yield. Yes. Senator Johnson. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Dietzik, could you lay out a little bit uh, on what's coming down uh, on floor session and some committees this uh, coming week? Senator Dietzik. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, thank you, Senator Johnson. So we'll have session Wednesday. I believe that's just to move papers, and then we'll be hearing um, bills on Thursday. Senator Johnson. Regular, regular committees throughout the week. Sorry about that. Senator Johnson. Thank you, Mr. President. And Senator Dietzik, any idea what bills we might be hearing then on Thursday? Senator Dietzik, will you yield for a question? Yes. She will yield. Yes. Senator Dietzik. Um, thank you, Mr. President. Um, Senator Johnson, I believe we were hearing Senator Frentz's bill. House File 7, I believe that is the 2040 plan. Senator Johnson. Thank you very much for that information. I appreciate that. Uh, following adjournment today, too, uh, for Senate Republicans, we will be coxing back at the Minnesota Senate building. Thank you. Any further announcements? Senator Dizik. Thank you, Mr. President. I move that the Senate do now adjourn until Wednesday, February 1st at 11 a.m. On that uh, a motion, all those in favor say aye. aye. All those opposed say no. no. The motion prevails and the Senate is now adjourned.